I feel like me cannot think of any reason why anybody would want to read this book or would read this book and enjoy it. One, two, three, let's switch this up. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be ranking all of the books that I read in 2022. So I did like my end of year videos last month and I read a total of 33 books. So I'm going to be going through and ranking all 33 of the books that I read last year. So if you're interested to see where I rank the books that I read for 2022, then keep on watching. Let's get started. So these are in no particular order. I'm not even sure like how it decided like what order to put these in. To go through the different categories, the first category is where I signed. So that's like my top tier. That is like if somebody gave me the option to like sell my soul or my firstborn child or whatever to reread this book for the first time, like to re-experience this for the very first time, where do I sign? Like, deal. The second category is really enjoyed but wasn't blown away. So those are kind of like your four star books. Books that were really good, like you really enjoyed them clearly, but like they weren't like mind blowing, they weren't top tier, they weren't books that you would necessarily like die to read again, but they were still really good. Then there was Myth, it was fine. I mean, that's pretty much self-explanatory, like it was fine, it was good, not great, you know. And then there's Not For Me. So these are the books that I didn't like, but I'm not gonna go as far as to say that they weren't good. They just weren't good to me like there's probably an audience out there somewhere that will enjoy this it just i'm i'm not that target demographic for whatever book goes in this category and then there's why does this exist like why does this book exist who asked for this just no the first one on the list is the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed and if you guys have watched my um five star or like my best and worst then you know that this book goes at the top with the where do I sign. Next is A Flicker in the Dark. Again, this also goes with where do I sign. That was really easy to just do those two right off the back, two five stars to kick off this video. Next is The Song of Achilles. I would say I'm torn between really enjoyed but wasn't blown away and not for me. And I'm, I don't want to put it in the not for me category because it was bad. It was actually really nice. It was like this beautifully written romance story, which just is not my cup of tea. Like that's just a personal thing. It wasn't that it was a bad story. It just wasn't for me. So I guess I, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say really enjoy. I'm going to say really enjoy because I did really enjoy it. But if I had to go back in time and do it again, I probably wouldn't do it again just because, like I said, this type of genre, this beautifully written romance, emotional story is just not what I'm into. But if you are into that, I do actually highly recommend this book. It was lovely. Next is A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm going to do A Court of Thorns and Roses first just because that book comes first in the series. And also I read that book before I read A Court of Mist and Fury. So for A Court of uh, Thorns and Roses... I'm going to say meh it was fine. The main character like Feyre was super irritating like I could not stand her. It wasn't until she went to Under the Mountain that I actually started to even like have any respect for this girl. <laughs> A Quarter of Mist and Fury however I did really enjoy. I wasn't necessarily blown away but I did really enjoy and I liked I particularly liked the romance and I liked the fact the romance did not overshadow the plot. Next is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and they are for some reason separated. So I'm going to do the first A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, the first book. And again, if you've seen my best and worst, then you know that I loved this book. I thought it was amazing. And then the second book, I think it's Good Girl Bad Blood. I'm hmm. I'm gonna have to say meh it was fine. I did really like the ending. I thought the whole ending, the plot twist with the whole like serial killer situation, like the ending I really enjoyed how that kind of came about. But I feel like there wasn't really anything leading up to that moment. I'm not saying that I want the book to be predictable but there should be some things where when you look after the plot twist happens you look back and you're like oh it was there the whole time and I just missed it. But with this book, it wasn't there the whole time. It was something that they just kind of like randomly brought up halfway into the book. Gonna have to give it a meh, it was fine. And then As Good As Dead, hmm. My issue with As Good As Dead is that I felt like it jumped around a lot. 
it was like one minute we're doing this okay now we're not doing that anymore now this is happening okay now that now we got to do this and it just was kind of like a little bit jumpy where it seemed like it was like a bunch of different stories or a bunch of different ideas that the author had and they were trying to figure out how to condense this all and put this all in one book. Like the book starts off with her wanting to investigate some cold case about something that happens in the Hudson River and maybe a couple chapters in that whole idea of her doing that just completely gets abandoned and then we move on to like something else. So and that happens a couple of different times where it's like okay this is happening and like you're getting invested in this thing and now it's like okay no we're not doing that anymore now we gotta do this. I'm gonna have to say meh it was fine next we have big little lies um i would say big little lies i would say for big little lies i'm gonna say really enjoyed but wasn't blown away some of the character development and interactions and relationships i really enjoyed reading about death note definitely have to put that in really enjoyed but wasn't blown away uh, it was close to being five stars. The reason why I couldn't give it five stars and the reason why I won't put it in the where do I sign category is because there are moments where when I was reading or there were moments when I was reading it where I felt like like there were just moments that were a little bit cringy but it was cringy because the target audience is someone that's like a little bit younger but I will say all in all I like can even considering that it was still a really 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 good. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle if you know you know this book was my favorite read of 2022 so that is definitely going and where do I sign? I probably wouldn't even need to sign anything away to reread this book for the first time because this book was so just so much that I could reread it right now and still feel like I'm reading it for the first time. The X Hex. I would say the X Hex. I would say meh it was fine. Um, the X Hex in my opinion was a little spicier than I was expecting and maybe that's my fault that I didn't know that going into it but I was not expecting all the spice that came out of that book. In a Holidays. Um, I really thought In a Holidays was such a cute story. I really did. But one of the issues that I have with this book is that it was supposed to be like the whole repeating day like Groundhog Day type of thing. And I feel like that didn't last very long in the story. One of the reasons why I want you to read this story in the first place was because I love that repeating day like Groundhog Day type of thing. So the fact that that kind of like got abandoned relatively early on. Mm, I'll put it in the really enjoy but wasn't blown away. I might change my mind about that later. We'll see. The Hunting Party. Um, I, would, I, would, I would say really enjoy but wasn't blown away. I think that I I figured out like the whole like mystery part of it. I knew the who, but I didn't predict the why. Layla, uh, <laughs> Layla, this book had me fired up. I was so angry <laughs> by the time I finished reading this book. I was absolutely furious with Colleen Hoover after reading this book. So I'm going to have to put it in the meh, it was fine category. Light Lark. Um, I'm going to say, <laughs> huh, where should I put this? Like the author had a lot of really good ideas, but didn't quite know how to like formulate it or like execute it. I would say not for me. I'm not going to say why does this exist. Love Light Farms. So this book was really cute. I would have to say that I really enjoyed it but wasn't blown away. I thought that their relationship was so cute. Even like the little like third act conflict that they had towards the end or whatever. I just feel like the author like they did a really good job of like kind of introducing it but also very quickly resolving it. Luckiest Girl Alive. This book was really something. I'm going to have to put this. This is one of those books that Despite the fact that I don't, I didn't really care for it, for some reason it is a book that I can't stop thinking about. I think that this book was so traumatizing that I cannot not think about this book. So yeah, this is actually going to go in the not for me. Definitely read the trigger warnings for that book. It was a lot that I was not prepared for. The Maidens. The Maidens I would say really enjoyed but wasn't blown away. I liked the, the mystery aspect of it. I liked the was it Shakespeare or Greek mythology or whatever that was intertwined in the storyline? Like I thought that was good. Malibu Rising, I would also say 
in terms of it was a book that I really enjoyed. It's not a book that I feel like I would reread versus like Evelyn, Seven Hundred Evelyn Hugo, for example, I would reread that. I don't know that I would reread Malibu Rising. I probably would just reread like certain sections or certain chapters maybe, but I probably would not reread the whole thing. All right, next we have Mexican Gothic and this is automatically going in the not for me section. I did not like that book at all, but I believe that there is an audience out there that will appreciate it. It just is not me. I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. Yes, this book was amazing. Like, uh, I just can't say enough good things about this book. Like, that is a book that I will tell anyone to read. One of Us is Lying is gonna go in the meh, it was fine category. One of Us is Next. I would say really enjoyed but wasn't blowing, blown away. Paper Girls, I'm gonna say really enjoyed but wasn't blown away. Shatter Me, where do I sign? Ugly Love, hmm. I'm gonna say really enjoyed but wasn't blown away. I think that's fair. The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, I really enjoyed this. I'm tempted to put it in the where do I sign. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the where do I sign. It, it really belongs somewhere in between where do I sign and really enjoyed but wasn't blown away because I would say that I liked that book more than I liked the books in the really enjoyed but wasn't blown away category but not more than I liked the books in the where do I sign category like this book could really go like in the category on its own. I would say like that and maybe like Court of Mist and Fury and Death Note. If I could make like another category, I'll just put them like in the beginning of this category. So I'm gonna put A Court of Mist and Fury. Oh, can I not rearrange them? Okay, there we go. The Visitor, um, it was fine. It's not a story that I would read again. We were liars, we don't need to talk about this, we already know where this is going. I'm gonna put it in the not for me category actually. If this is your first time experiencing this type of storyline, then like it would be like a very like whoa kind of book. But if you've read enough or if you've watched enough movies or TV, then it was you could predict the whole story like a mile away. So it was it wasn't good in my opinion, but I know there is a demographic or a group of people out there that will really appreciate that story. It just isn't me. The weekend away. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say it was fine. Wild Seed is another book that I would say is not for me. Um, that book, I think I said this before, was like Roots meets X-Men. Um, so yeah, just not for me. And then last but not least, my year of rest and relaxation. And again, if you watch my best and worst, then you already know that this book is gonna go in the why does this exist category because I don't understand. I can't even justify that there's a demographic of people out there who would like this because my question is why? Why are there people that like this? What do you like about it? Please let me know. That is a genuine question. If you are somebody that read this book and liked it, please tell me down below in the comments why you like this book because I feel like me cannot think of any reason why anybody would read this book and enjoy it. And there you have it. That is my ranking of all the books that I read in 2022. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what your rankings were for any of the books on this list that you maybe read. All of my social media links will be down below in the description box. If you have made it this far into the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe if you are not already subscribed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Like I will push this on anyone with eyeballs and tell them that they should read this. Hell, even if you don't have eyes, <laughs> you've had ears, you can listen to the audiobook.